and welcome. So in this one we are, and she is, so she has, so those are just, so the, dang it, what's book number one? Welcome, just welcome. These endings are so awkward. And I'm gonna go because I am rambling and I'm being a cuckoo. So I love, I love you guys. Hey everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse or welcome if you are new here. In today's video, I thought we would talk about a whole slew of books that I have on loan from my library right now, the online edition. I just wanted to look to make sure my screen was still awake. So I actually have 10 audiobooks currently on loan because Hoopla lets you borrow 10 books a month. So one of my most favorite things to do from the library is to get audiobooks. So every once in a while I will do an ebook, but I tend to lean into my library for the audiobook factor of it all. And some of these books are rereads for me. Sometimes it is me testing some waters before maybe I'm going to buy a book, or sometimes it's a book that I'm reading that I just want to compulsively live in constantly. So I'm doing both a physical copy of it that I have as well as an audiobook version of it. That is a lot of explanation, but anyway, this is just sort of the core of it all. So I've got kind of a little bit all over the map, I would say this time around, but let's dive into what I currently have on loan. I don't know why I always repeat what I told you guys we're doing at the beginning. <laughs> this is what we're doing. Here's the books. So the first book I have is Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. So if you guys have been watching me lately, then I have talked about this book, I realize a ton. So I am at the time of filming this currently listening to it and reading it. I started out with the audiobook of this because I'd heard so many great things about it. And I was just like itching for something a little bit lighter yet comedic. And basically like, uh, sentence into this book, I was completely obsessed and went out that night and bought the physical copy of it. So I am dog-earing to death the physical. I am listening to it. It's so great. It is a fake dating book with Luke and Oliver. Luke is kind of the wild child son of a rock star whose reputation is a little bit in tatters. And Oliver is a bit of the buttoned up barrister and he needs a date for a VIP family event that he has going on. So they have a mutual friend who connects them. They agree to the fake dating and then I'm only about halfway through it, but my sense is that the real feels will develop and that we are hopefully going to get a happy ending for these two guys. And I absolutely love them. The narrator is British. The humor is completely just brilliant. I am obsessed with best friend Bridget. I am obsessed with Luke's mom and I am obsessed with Luke and Oliver and them together. So it's just so funny. There's definitely some heartfelt moments to it and it's just giving me absolutely everything that I want. And I am gearing up to read Husband Material, which comes out on August 2nd, which by the time you guys see this will already be out. So anyway, book number one, I will not talk this much about all of them, but that's boyfriend material. The second book I have is The Sunday Girl by Pip Drysdale. So I had heard about this on a podcast. I don't remember which one. I listened to so many of them, as you guys know, I did a whole video about all the podcasts that I listened to. But this was one of those books where the podcaster was like, if you love a revenge story, this is totally for you. I love a revenge story. So in this book, we are following Taylor Bishop and it says she is hurt, angry, and wants to destroy Angus Hollingsworth in the way he destroyed her. Insidiously, irreparably, like a puzzle slowly disassembled. A couple of pieces stolen from it and then discarded, knowing that nobody would ever be able to put it back together again. So she consults the book, The Art of War, and she makes a plan. Then she takes the next irrevocable step, one that will change her life forever. So it says any woman who's ever been involved with a bad, bad man and been dumped will understand what it feels like to be broken, brokenhearted and bent on revenge. So I expect this to just be delicious with a capital D and I am here for it. I feel like sometimes you just want those books that you're just like, yes, give me all the deliciousness, sign me up. In a total of 180, we have A.A. A. Milne's The Red House Mystery. So yes, the man who wrote Winnie the Pooh, that's exactly who this is. He wrote one and one only mystery. This is one of the books that is 
Ruined Spoiled in Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. I've mentioned this before, I'm trying to selectively read some of the books that are spoiled in Eight Perfect Murders that I'm actually curious about. And this one I just have a curiosity about because the man who wrote Winnie the Pooh wrote a mystery. So I'm totally here for this one. So in this we have Mark Ablett's stately mansion, The Red House, is filled with very proper guests when his most improper brother returns from Australia. The prodigal brother enters Mark's study, the parlor maid hears arguing, and the brother dies, rather suddenly, with a bullet between his eyes. The study is locked from the inside and Mark is missing. Investigating the crime is wealthy Anthony Gillingham, who rivals Sherlock Holmes in his remarkable powers of observation. He's aided by his friend Bill Beverly, a cheerful young man in white flannels. Echoes of Christopher Robin and his friends chime nostalgically throughout this charming classic tale of detection. So I suspect Sherlock Holmes, Poirot kind of vibes. It is a six hour audiobook, so I think it's just gonna be interesting and I really just have a curiosity about it. So we'll be diving into the Red House mystery. Next up is Hollywood Ending by Kelly Garrett. So this is book number two in the Dana Anderson kind of amateur detective series, which is called Detective by Day Mystery Book. So I read Hollywood Homicide in July and was really interested to pick up part two. You know when you just sort of like get into a series and then you just wanna know what's going to happen next? So this is a cozy mystery, but I really like Dana and her extended family of friends that she had. And this I expect will be more sort of cozy hijinks and Sue kind of a situation. So we had a little bit of will they won't they mystery in book number one. We had a mystery that was solved. So this is not one of those series where like the mystery goes into book number two. That was sort of like a one and done wrapped up, but a door was left open, which I always enjoy. So in book number one, Dana is very much down on her luck. Her parents are at risk of losing their house and she does not have money. So she winds up seeing a billboard about a hit and run that has gone unsolved with a $15,000 reward to whoever can solve it. And Dana realizes that she and her friends were actually in a car driving that night and were sideswiped by another car which she believed was the car that committed the hit and run. So she goes down the amateur detective path and looks into that one, looks into that hit and run murder, death, accident. And it was just really good fun. So this is book number two. We are in Hollywood, Tinseltown, just sort of all that celeb, fashion, blogger, paparazzi, kind of all that fun stuff. So I very much enjoyed it. Like I said, it's a cozy, totally satisfying and I am just very curious to see where the series continues into. On what I fully expect to be a much darker turn is The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. So I read One of Us is Dead a few months back, which was her new release, and I had not read any of her backlist, but I want to say it was Dennis from Scared Straight Reads who was raving about this book in particular, and of course I just want to give it a go because I totally loved One of Us is Dead. So in this one, we have Sarah Morgan. She's a successful and powerful defense attorney in Washington, DC. She's 33, a named partner at her firm, and life is going exactly how she planned. You know, something's gonna happen here. The same cannot be said for her husband, Adam. He's a struggling writer who has had little success in his career. He begins to tire of his and Sarah's relationship as she is constantly working. Out in the secluded woods, here we go, at Adam and Sarah's second home, Adam engages in a passionate affair with Kelly Summers. Then one morning, everything changes. Adam is arrested for Kelly's murder. She had been found stabbed to death in Adam and Sarah's second home. Yikes. Sarah soon finds herself playing the defender for her own husband, a man accused of murdering his mistress. But is Adam guilty or is he innocent? So the blurb on the front of the book, I don't know if you can read it, it says his mistress is dead, his wife is his only hope. Ah, this one just sounds like so much fun too. So One of Us is Dead definitely had also that delicious darkness to it. I'm expecting much more of the same in this book. So this one came out in 2020. I love it. The mistress is dead and the wife is the defender. I'm here, I'm totally here. The next book is a 2022 release and this is Must Love Books by Shauna Robinson. So this is a debut. There's a quote from Taylor Jenkins Reid on it, which kind of was enough for me. So this one says, a wise and honest story of how it feels to be a young woman in search of yourself. 
So in this one, we are following a woman named Nora and she is overworked, underpaid, the last bookish assistant standing. So she is an editorial assistant at Parsons Press and it was her first step towards her dream job. Because honestly, is there anything dreamier than making books for a living? I don't think so. I mean, writing them is also, yeah, but you know what I mean. So it says, after five years of lunch orders, finicky authors, and per my last emails, Nora has come to one grand conclusion, dream jobs do not exist. So her life is spiraling, the Parsons staff is sinking, and Nora gets hit with even worse news. Parsons is cutting her already unlivable salary. Unable to afford her rent and without even the novel she once loved as comfort, Nora decides to moonlight for a rival publisher to make ends meet, and maybe poach some of Parsons' authors along the way. But when Andrew Santos, a best-selling Parsons author no one can afford to lose, is thrown into the mix, Nora has to decide where her loyalties lie. Do they lie with her new dream job, ever optimistic Andrew, or herself and her future? So it says that this is, you know, building your storybook life, finding out what your dream really is, has some echoes of Younger, which is one of my favorite shows, which takes place in book publishing, which is just so smart and so fun. So again, you have to find out how you write your own story and how you find your own happy ending. Just feels like all the warm and fuzzies with books on top, so yes. The next book I have is one I actually already finished and this is Ragdoll by Daniel Cole. So this was one of those cases of I was physically reading it but I did not want to be without it so I got the audiobook as well so I could just live in this book for the two days it took me to read it. <laughs> Obsessed. This is the first in what is currently a three book series. I don't know if it's going to go beyond that but this is also a TV show on AMC so I wanted to read the book. Now I'm going to watch the show. This is like where these ideas come from I have no idea this is also a debut so in this book we have two detectives so it is Wolf it's his nickname and then Emily Baxter they are former partners and they are called to this gruesome murder scene when the book opens which is a body which is six different body parts stitched together literally and it becomes dubbed the rag doll and the ragdoll killer winds up reaching out to Wolf's ex-wife, who is a popular journalist, with a list of his next six victims, the dates he plans to kill them, and Wolf is the last name on the list. So Wolf and Baxter have to figure out who the person is to stop him from killing the next people. It is so fast paced, so twisted. It's funny not haha -ha funny, but so many of the reviews I read talked about how gruesome this book was, which gave me a little bit of pause because as much as I love the dark and messed up, I do have a little bit of hesitation for like really like gruesome on the page stuff. So I won't pretend it wasn't because it was, but at the same time, I was so invested in this book and story. The writing was so strong. There is delicious dark humor in this, which I think the audiobook really ratcheted up, like completely nailed Wolf's voice, that the gruesome element didn't bother me in the slightest. So whether that says something about, again, just the craft and the intelligence of the writing or the ability to be so lost in story that those things just don't stand out in a book that maybe where like if the story or the writing wasn't so good, it would feel like it was there for like just the ick factor. Totally served the story, didn't bother me in the least. This was narrated by Alex Wyndham. I cannot recommend this enough. Whether you read it or listen to it or do some of both, completely brilliant, completely, completely brilliant. The next book I have is Ace of Spades, and this is by Farida Abaka Amide. I actually have the physical copy of this as well. I feel like it's not gonna be within camera distance, but I have the physical copy of this as well. I feel like I know it's here somewhere. Yikes, okay, anyway. So this is a YA thriller, and it is Gossip Girl Meets Get Out is how it's pitched. So I am angling to read this on the Sooner side, obviously, and envision sort of a combination of like reading and listening, because I feel like this is one of those books from what I have heard with the reviews, it's like a compulsively readable book. So I feel like I'm gonna wanna be like in it to win it. So in this book, we are focusing on two students and their struggles against an anonymous bully. So they are at Nevis Private Academy and they are selected to be part of the elite school senior class prefects. It looks like their year is off to an amazing start. After all, not only does it look great on college applications, but it officially puts each of, the, each of them in the running for valedictorian. Shortly after the announcement is made though, someone who goes by ACES 
begins using anonymous text messages to reveal secrets about the two of them that turn their lives upside down and threaten every aspect of their carefully planned futures. As Aces shows no signs of stopping, what seems like a sick prank quickly turns into a dangerous game with all the cards stacked against them. Can Devin and Chamaka stop Aces before things become incredibly deadly? So it says heart pounding suspense, relevant social commentary, and a high octane thriller. This is the debut. We've got two POVs. We've got two audiobook narrators as well. So I'm really looking forward to this one. I feel like this was on so many people's best of list last year because this is a 2021 release. So I have had it, I am in kind of this groove of YA thrillers. I am, I just finished redoing Inheritance Games and Hawthorne Legacy. I just read the Agathas and I'm gearing up for the final gambit, which is coming out. And as we, I can't even believe it, are like eking closer to September, which is back to school, like not for me personally, but I feel like those back to school vibes are clinging up or coming up too. So this feels like a perfect one to read right about now. I feel like that's a song right about now. It totally is. Fat boy slim. <laughs> The next one I have was recommended by Amanda at the Curly Reader, and this is After We Were Stolen by Book Bathus, I want to say. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So in this one, there's kind of a cult vibe to this, which as I gear up for my Ashley Winstead last housewife, give me all the cults, please. So in this one, it says, when 19-year-old Avery awakens to flames consuming her family's remote compound, she knows it's her only chance to escape her father's grueling survival training, bizarre rules, and gruesome punishments. She and her brother Cole flee the grounds for the first time in their lives, suddenly homeless in a world they know nothing about. So they hide out for a couple of months, they wind up getting arrested for shoplifting, and a discovery is made that Avery and Cole were kidnapped 15 years earlier, stolen by cult leaders they knew as mom and dad. So this is what happens afterwards and the aftermath of it. I don't wanna to read too much about this one. Amanda said this was just like absolutely amazing. And she was talking about it like immediately where we were all like on it, on it, on it, on it. Everybody wanted it. So I'm totally excited for this one. It just sounds, like I said, like really good, really fast paced. And I did not have this on my radar at all. So I love me a book that I've never heard of before coming highly recommended by people I trust down for it. And then finally, I have Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. So this was, again, if you've been here for a minute, the first Jennifer Hillier book that I read several years ago. And it is the last book I have to reread before I make you guys my Jennifer Hillier spotlight video. So I figure I'm probably gonna do a combo of listening and reading. And I'm just really excited to just reconfirm slash find out if this is still my favorite of all of her books. So I just did a re-listen of Little Secrets. I originally read that in ARC format when it first came out in 2020. So I had a very good time doing the audio of that. And I'm, I'm just really excited to relive this book because I feel like I have hyped it up so much to you guys and also in my own head, but I have read all the Jennifer Hilliers and this one remains my favorite. So I'm gonna read it again to reconfirm. And then I will give you guys that whole Jennifer Hillier video. But in this one, I feel like this is her darkest, most messed up, like rawest, if that's really a word, book of them all. It's smart, it hooked me, it made me uncomfortable, it made me angry, it had me cheering for people. This was a book where, I have mentioned this, like she has talked about it on podcasts. I got to meet her at Thriller Fest and talk to her briefly about the book. It was like the no holds barred, everything into this. This was like her, her last ditch effort, like she was like, I'm gonna put everything I have into this book. No fear, no anything, like just go all in. And I think it paid off in spades. I think it is her best work, even though I love all of her work, I still think this is the best. So the description of this book online, it says it's the story of three best friends, one who was murdered, one who went to prison, and one who's been searching for the truth all of these years. So when she was 16, Angela Wong, one of the most popular girls in school went missing and no one ever found out what happened to her. So now we fast forward 14 years and her best friend Georgina Shaw, AKA Geo, winds up getting arrested by Kaiser Brody, who was her third friend from high school. 
And Georgina is linked not only to Angela's disappearance, but because when the book opens, Angela's remains are found in the woods behind Gio's childhood home. So that's how the book opens. And we wind up seeing the consequences in the present day. And we also go back in time to find out exactly what happened. And there are serial killer vibes. We've got like the best girlfriends. We've got just secrets and twistedness. And again, a lot of uncomfortable situations happening in this book, but just smart, dark, the epitome of dark and messed up people doing dark and messed up things. Everything I want in a book. And I'm going to dive back into it and I'm so excited. I just like, I feel like I almost like got the chills talking about it. Just love her, love Jennifer Hillier. So those are all the audiobooks I currently have on loan from my library. Will I read all 10 of them before they expire? I've technically already read one of them. I will let you guys know. Whatever I read, when I read it, you guys of course will be amongst the first to hear all about it right here or on my Instagram or maybe on my Goodreads, wherever you wanna find me. But let me know if you guys are like big on the audiobook kick, if you are more of like the reading physically kind of a kick. And I will talk to you guys in another video when that happens, but let me know whatever you wanna let me know down below. If you wanna recommend some of these books that I talked about, maybe tell me to prioritize one over the others. Always here for that kind of information too. So until next time, I feel like I need to take a breath. It's been a long day of filming. Thank you guys so much for hanging out today. Horns are honking outside. I'm gonna go before it gets super annoying, but take care you guys. I'll see you soon. And yeah, thanks for being here. Bye everybody.